faithful, oh praise his name. All my life you has been so, so good. I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Praise the Lord, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life I have been so, you have been so, so good. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessings be unto the children of God today. We thank God for our teleconference and God has been so good to us. And we are so grateful for his goodness. We have to continue to sing of the goodness of God. And the Lord has been so good. Praise the name of the Lord. Today we want to thank God for his goodness and thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Our God is good. He is to be praised from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name is to be praised. Hallelujah. So we want to thank God for this day. The psalmist says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we go, I want to start with a word of prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your blessed mercies. We thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for this day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh God, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we lift you up. Hallelujah. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. Let your name be praised. Let your name be glorified. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now today, thank God for this day, this day that the Lord has made, and we should be glad that we are alive and well and able to give him praise and give him the glory, the glory that is due unto his name. Today, I'd like to look at a psalm psalm um 31 praise the lord i want to look at psalms 31 and it says here in psalm 31 the psalm says psalm it says in thee o lord do i put my trust let me never be ashamed deliver me in thy righteousness bow down thine ear to me and deliver me speedily be thou my rock a house of defense to save me for thou art my rock and my fortress therefore for thy name's sake lead me and guide me put me out put me out the net that they have laid privily for me for thou art my strength in thee i have committed my spirit thou hast redeemed me o god of truth I have hated them with that regarded lies vanity. I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. For thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast made known my soul in adversity. Thou hast shut me up in the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of my iniquity. My bones are consumed. I was a reproach among, among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors. And a fear unto my acquaintance, they did see me without fled. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I am a broken vessel, for I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. They took counsel together against me and devised my hurt. My soul devised, they devised this to take my, away my life. 
but I trust in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of the enemy and from them that persecute me. Praise God, praise God. Now we see here the Psalmist David crying out unto the Lord. You know, this pathway that we are into is a pathway of trials and testing and all sorts of things happen to a child of God. Once we serve God, you know, we begin, we are in a war, you know, against the enemy because the enemy wants to keep us out of the presence of God, out of the favor of God, out of the glory of God, out of the blessings that God has uh, promised us. You know, so the enemy will try everything to put us off our track. But let us focus, even this as um, the psalmist focused upon thee, upon the Lord, and said, In thee, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. And when we put our trust in the Lord, we are depending on Him because we know once we are our trust is in Him, He will maintain that trust. He will keep that trust. He will keep us. God bless you, Sister McLean. I'm reading from Psalm, Psalm 31. Um, so I'm reading the Psalm, Psalm of David. So in Psalm 1, it says, verse 1, it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Deliver me and never let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thy ear and hear me. The, amen. The, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Be thou my strong rock and a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. So we see the psalmist is putting his trust in the Lord. As we as children of God should put our trust in the Lord at all times. Not just sometimes, but in all times, in all situations. We should put our trust in the Lord because He is He is the one who can deliver us from any situation. So David says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. I'm trusting in you, Lord. Because you are my refuge, you are my strength, you are my salvation, you are my hope, you are my deliverer, you are everything that I need. You are my provider. And you know, God wants us to have that trust in Him. God wants us to have that confidence in Him that in all situations we know we can depend on Him. We know we can count on Him because He is our Father. He is like a Father. He is a Father to us. He is a Lord to us. He's a savior to us. He's a deliverer. So David realized, he says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Psalm 31. Let me never be ashamed. You know, if we put our trust in God, we will never be ashamed. Because he will deliver us from shame. He said, Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear unto me and deliver me speedily. Sometimes we're in a situation where we need God to move and to move speedily because there are times when we are, we, we are in a situation when we don't know how we're going to be delivered from this situation. But if we call upon God, God knows the urgency of our need. God knows how urgent it is when we call upon Him. But so David said, bow down your ear, Lord. Bow down, hear me, deliver me speedily. Thou art my strong rock. When we say the Lord is my strong rock, it means that we are, we are standing on Him. We are leaning on Him. We are trusting in Him. You know, and He said, Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. You know, when we realize how the love of God towards us 
and when we look to him we know that whatever the circumstances is our God is able he is able nothing is the impossible and nothing is too hard for him it doesn't matter what situation we find ourselves in so David trusted in the Lord and he says thou art my rock and my fortress therefore for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. We need to be led by the Spirit. We need to be guided in everything we do. We need the Spirit to lead us and to guide us. He says, pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Wonderful when God, God wants us, as children of God, to lean on Him. He wants us to depend on Him. You know, he said, put not your trust in man, put your trust in the Lord. That David knew that God was someone he could trust in every situation, no matter what it is. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. We should say that, Lord, the, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my deliverer, the Lord is my comfort, the Lord is my healer. You know, and he is everything. One songwriter says, he's my everything, he is my all. And, they, and so it says, for in thy hand I commit my spirit. I am in your hands. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. I have hated them that regarded light vanity, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. Because you know, as when God knows that we are depending on Him, God don't mean to fail us. God is not willing to fail us if He knows that we are putting our trust in Him. None that put their trust in Him shall be disappointed because He is a God of His Word. He said, Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. I will... I will bless you. I will, I will care, keep you from all danger, seen and unseen. Not that they will, we will not have trouble in the world, but whatever it is that come upon us, let us be assured that God is able to deliver us. And he went on to say, verse 7, I, I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversity. Thou hast known my soul in adversity when we are in any type of trouble whatsoever whatever it may be god knows and all we need to do is call upon him and say here i am lord deliver me lord have mercy upon me lord and the mercy you know like a mother the psalmist says as a, a mother pitieth his, his child so the lord pitieth them that fear him you know and you know we look up to god just like a child will look up to his mother if she's if he's in need if he's in trouble he looks up to his mother he look up to his you know because that is the way that's the way god is towards us he's a loving god for thou hast considered my trouble when we are in trouble you know if you think about job job was in trouble but god eyes was upon him nevertheless and whatever that job went through god was hand was upon him nevertheless god was there for him nevertheless it was not all comfort for job but god was able to keep him in his trouble god was able to 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 preserve him in his trouble he could have been destroyed i mean if, if if the devil had his way with job he would have trashed him out you know he would have destroyed him he would have taken his life but the god said to him touch not his life touch not his soul you know so the devil has so much he can do but god will preserve us in trouble thou hast considered my trouble thou hast known my soul in adversities and thou hast put me up in the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Now, wonderful. Brethren, well, all God wants us to do as children of God is to trust Him. That's all He wants us to do. Trust Him. You know, I mean, a child trusts his parents. 
You know, wherever, the, wherever, uh, wherever you take a child and say, come follow me, come, the child will come, the child will follow you, the, you know, you will lead that child and you know for sure that you don't want anything bad to happen to your child. So you know that the love you have for the child, the child is safe while the child is around you, while the child is with you. And so it is with God. Once we are in Him, once he knows that we are putting our trust in him, once he knows that we are looking to him, you know, he's not going to let us down. He says, thou hast shut me up. Thou hast not shut me up into the hands of the enemy. He has not left us. He did not leave Job totally in the hands of the devil. Even though what David, what the devil did to Job and how much he lost all his cattle and his, and his oxen and his sheep and his camel and everything that he lost, God's eyes were still upon him. God did not shut him up out in the hand of the enemy. And then in the last days we see that God blessed Job more abundantly than he was before. And God will do the same for us. All we need to do is to put our trust in him. In thee, O Lord, put I my trust. Then in verse 9 of Psalm, Psalm, um, Psalm 31, in verse 9 it says here, it says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consume with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. Uh, you know, this, this is a pathway that we have chosen to follow Christ. And even when we follow Christ, sometimes trouble hits us. But the Bible says that God is a present help in time of trouble. So God knows that in some in life we will have trouble. But he says he's a present help. That means when trouble comes, God is there to deliver. God is there to deliver. He is a present help in time of trouble. The psalmist says, Have mercy upon me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes is consumed with grief. I am, I am in grief. My heart, my eyes, my soul and my belly. I am in grief. But thou art my help. Because indeed do I put my trust. And when I just say, My life is spent... My life is spent with grief and my years in sighing. Just imagine, uh, if we think about it, the psalmist, and you know, you can, we can see that God loved this psalmist and this psalmist loved God. The way that this psalmist was focused upon God. And it, it, despite all the trouble that uh, the psalmist went through, he said, my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. There's trouble. There is grief. There is sadness. There is temptation. But my life is spent with grief and my years is in sighing. My strength faileth. Because of my iniquity, my bones are consumed. You know, sometimes when we are at our lowest, is then that's when God is ready to lift us up. When we are down, God is ready to lift us up. You know, you know the way up is down, and people don't realize that you have to you have to be down to get up. So sometimes we have to go down to get up. And when God lifts us up, we are well lifted. My strength failed because of my iniquity. My bones, my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all my enemies, especially my neighbors. Imagine when people look down at you. Because this, this is the way, you know, this is the way of a child of God. Even when Jesus came, Jesus was ridiculed, he was scorned, he was mocked, he was jeered, and all sorts of things happened to our Lord when he was here. And, you know, it's an example. It happened to, in the past, to patriots and prophets. How they were shamed, how they were all, all manner of things. Elijah had to run from, um, uh, from Jezebel. 
He had to run from Ahab and Jezebel. He had to run away because he was there was a reproach against them, against him, because he stood for the Lord. I was a reproach among my enemies, especially my neighbors, and a fear of mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. In other words, you know, the Bible says he had no comeliness. This was Jesus. Jesus had no comeliness that now would desire him. And a child of God, we just look like we, we are, we, to the world, we appear to be nothing but in the eyes of God, we are treasures. God has our eyes upon us. We are his treasure. God blessing is upon us. We may just seem like we just honor people out there, but the eyes of God is upon us. That is very important. And I, it says, I'm a fear of my acquaintance. They that see me without fled. They, they, people don't regard us. They think, you know, they may have all manner of things to say, you know, but where, where God is concerned, as long as we put our trust in Him, he will keep us. He will bless us. And our blessing is sure. It says, I am forgotten. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. And they took counsel together against me to devise my hurt. It doesn't matter how people would devise and take counsel against you. It doesn't matter. In, in the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter. It could be powers. It could be principalities. It could be powers. It could be anything. Nothing can stand against a child of God when we are God in our, is on our side. Even though the psalm says, fear is on every side. And my enemies took counsel together against me to devise my heart. But he went on to say, I, but I trusted in the Lord. I trusted in the Lord. I said, I said, thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Thou art my God. My times are in thy hands. Think about that, what the psalmist is saying. My times are in thy hands. The Bible says to Jeremiah, Before you were formed in the womb, Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. And every one of us as children of God, God knew us before we were even formed in the womb. And God has planned and ordained us. Hallelujah. And and have a plan to call us in the due course of time. He called us. And those who he call, he he justify. And ju those who he justify, he glorify. So God has got a plan. He said, Psalmist says, My times, my times are in thy hand. My coming and my going is in thy hand. Because I put because I put my trust in thee, my times are in thy hand. My today is in thy hand. My tomorrow is in thy hand. My day after tomorrow is in thy hand. And all my days are in thy hand. And if we know that if we put but when we put our trust in God, then He has got He has made a way for us. He has marked out a path for us to walk. When He know we are putting our trust in Him, our times, our today is in His hands, our tomorrow in, is in His hands. My times are in Thy hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute me. Fear not, says the Lord. And then he went on in verse 16 and says, Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Make thy face. You know, when we pray to God, we should always say, Lord, cause your face to shine upon me. Hallelujah. Cause your face. 
to shine upon me. The psalmist says, make thy face shine upon thy servant. Save me. Oh, because when the face of God shine upon us, Oh, glory be to God. The glory of God is upon us. The anointing of God is upon us. And it's all because the psalmist says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. In thee do I put my trust. And if we look at the psalm, uh, Exodus um, chapter 34 and verse verse. Verse, verse 27 Exodus, Exodus chapter 34 verse 20, 27 it says and the Lord said unto Moses write these words for after the ten of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel for and he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights he did not eat bread nor drink water. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Brethren, you see how great our God is? And he wrote upon the tablets the word of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So Moses went upon Mount Horeb, up on the Mount of God, to meet God and to talk to God. Oh, glory. And he says, Moses... The Lord said unto Moses, write these words and the tenor of these words and made them a covenant with thee. And he said, and he was with the Lord forty days and forty nights. Moses was with God Almighty upon the mountain. And he says he did not eat nor drink water forty days. That is over one month. How great is our God? And it says, and it came to pass, uh, it came to pass as Moses came down from Mount Sinai with two tablets. And I'm talking about trusting in the Lord, you know, trusting. And Mount Sinai, the two tablets and the testimony in his hand, it came down from the mount and was not that his skin, the skin of his face. We're talking about the face of God and the face, the skin of his face shone. While he talked with him. So in the presence of God. It says Moses face shine. Because he was in the presence of the almighty God. The great I am. The altogether lovely. The El Shaddai. The bright and morning star. The lily of the valley. Moses stood and talked to God upon the mountain. Until his face shone. There was no need for him to eat or to drink for 40 days. Hallelujah. Can you imagine when we are also in the presence of God? You know, it's no wonder when, when Jesus says to the devil, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Because the mouth of God brings word that satisfy a hungry soul. And Moses, because he was in the presence of God and he spoke to God, his skin of his face shone, shine, while he talked with him. Praise the name of the Lord. And he went on to say, um, verse 30, um, And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh. The psalmist says, cause your face to shine upon me. Because when God is with us, the glory of his presence is with us, and we can feel the blessings of God when we draw near to God, when we look into him. And it says, and Moses called unto them, and Aaron and the ruler of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. And afterwards, Mo, the, after all the children of Israel came nigh, he gave commandment, all that the Lord had spoken to him upon Mount Sinai. Until he had done speaking with them, he put on the veil of his face, because his face shined, and the children of Israel couldn't even look upon him. 
How great is our God. How mighty and great is our God. And then we look at Exodus 33 and from verse 7, Exodus 33, it tells us, And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp. And after, afar off the camp, he called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out onto the tabernacle and all that the people rose up and every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, Moses entered into the tabernacle, a cloudy pillar descended. Praise the Lord. And stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. <laughs> You know, it's wonderful, but when we think about how great God is, and the, the, you know how God can draw near to us, and how we can feel His presence. If we look to Him, if we lean upon Him, if we trust in Him, if we have a, a close relationship with Him, because Moses had a close relationship with God, and God met him and talked to him. And because God was pleased with Moses, because Moses was a very humble man. And then if we talk about getting close to God, we know humility is something that draws. When we have a humble heart, humble spirit, you know, it draws us near to God. Moses was meek. I think the Bible says Moses was the meekest of all men that are on the earth. And because he was humble and meek, God was pleased with him. You know, you know, when we have pride, the pride is something that keeps us from God, keep us out of the presence of God. But Moses was humble, he was meek. And the Bible said, the Lord talked with Moses. He said, and, uh, and at all the people saw the cloud, the pillar. So God had to make his pres presence seen. So God descended before the tabernacle in a cloud, the pillar. You know, when, when, we, when, God, when we come together, especially like in a congregation, we have to see something that God should move. We need to see the movement of God. And we get the movement of God when we allow God to have His way in us. When we allow God to have His way. When we, don't, when we try to put down self and let self be slain and let the Spirit of God move in us and around us and as a as a, as a congregation of people we need to have the presence of god we need to allow the presence of god to manifest and it happens in those days and it happened even in the days of the apostle that they see signs and wonders paul and silas was in prison and they prayed to god and they sing the songs even they were beaten but you know they they within they were they counted themselves be happy because they were beaten for the name of the Lord and they sang in the in 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 the prison and God moved that prison and make an earthquake shake, make their great shaking. Brethren, as children of God, we are to seek the Lord. David said, "In Thee, O Lord, do I put my trust? In Thee, O Lord." Do I put my trust? God wants us to put our trust in Him. He says, All the people saw the cloudy pillar when Moses went to the door of the tabernacle. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent. Hallelujah. And the Bible says here um, in verse 11, And the Lord spake to Moses face to face. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. The Lord spake unto Moses face to face. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. As a man speaketh unto his friend. How nice, how great, how wonderful, how awesome. That we as children of men 
could have this relationship with, with the Almighty God. We, the children of men, can have this kind of communication. It shows us what God can do for us when we put our trust in Him. The Almighty God who created heaven and earth spake to this man Moses face to face just as a man speaketh unto his friend and he turned again into the camp and his servant Joshua and Nun, son of Nun and a young man departed out of the tabernacle. Brethren, we serve a powerful God. We serve a great God. We serve a God who sits high and look low. Hallelujah. We serve a God who's mindful of us. Us. You know, we, you know, we, Psalm said, when I consider the heavens, the work of thy hands, you know, the moon and the stars who thou hast ordained, the great mighty ocean, the sea, and the land, know that two thirds of the earth is covered by water, by sea. And look how much land there is. And how great is this world, how, how, how great this world seems to be. But it was all created by the Lord, by His Word. So the psalmist said, when I consider all this work, this great work that thou hast created, the, the moon, the stars, that thou hast ordained, the sea, the dry land, what is man? What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him, and the son of man that you will talk to him face to face, as a man would talk to his friend? How awesome! How blessed! How blessed we are, and how blessed we can be, if we put our trust in the Lord. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Hallelujah. And um, in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 33, Genesis chapter 33, verse 1. Now, I want to show you what God can do for us, my brethren, and those who are against us, and those who may be seen as enemies to us. We don't, we don't have any enemy. The only enemy we have is the devil himself. And the devil manifests manifest himself in people. And sometimes we are blaming the individual, but it's just the devil and the influence of the devil. And that when we understand these things, we see why Jesus, when he was on the cross, and when he was being crucified, he said, forgive them, Lord, because they know not what they've done. They know not what they do. You know, when there was stone in Stephen and those stones was hitting him, he lifted up his eyes and he saw, he said he saw the Son of Man, he saw Jesus standing in heaven on the right hand of God, of power. God stood up. You know, because the eyes of God is upon the righteous. And God is mindful of his people. And, they, and, and, and uh, uh, Stephen says, forgive them, Lord. They know not what they've done. So my point is that we have one common enemy, and that's the devil himself. And the only way we can be overcome the, the devil is by putting our trust in the Lord. That is the way. Put our trust in the Lord at all times that is the only way so when our enemies come upon us the devil says they say, so when my foes and my enemies come up to eat up my flesh they stumble and flay, fell because we're in the presence of god now i want to look at the story of of jacob and joseph and you know they were twins and um jacob received the blessing because if it was foreordained that Jacob should be 
I received the blessing. It was foreordained even before he was formed in his womb. And that's why, you know, God knows us before we were created in the womb. And he knew Joseph. And even though Esau was the first to born, the elder one, he was supposed to get the blessing. But God has ordained that Joseph, Jacob would get the blessing. And we see what Jacob did, um, supplanted and took the blessing. And God's father, Isaac, blessed him instead of Esau. And Esau came when Jacob had already received the blessing. But it was preordained. It was ordained that Jacob should be blessed. And Esau, rather than Esau. But Esau was very angry with Jacob because Jacob received the blessing that he should have got. And so they were away, the brothers were separated for a while and there was a time when they had to come together. And I just want to read the scripture. It just shows us how God can put us in favor with those who are against us. And this is a prime example. And when we put our trust in the Lord, Jacob has received the blessing. And if I read from Genesis 33, it says, And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came with him 400 men. And he divided the children of Leah, that's his wife, and unto Rachel, his wife, and unto two handmaids, and put the handmaid in their children foremost, and Leah and his children after. And Rachel at the utmost, and he passed over before them, and bowed his head to the ground seven times. So Jacob realized that Esau was very angry with him at the time when they separated. So he was a bit fearful of what Esau would do when Esau saw him and his children and his wives and his children, and he was really, really a bit weary of what would come to pass. But I would think that he put his trust in the Lord. And it, it went on to say, as he passed over them, he bowed himself. So as he got to his brother Esau, he bowed himself seven times until he came near to his brother. I think Jacob was a bit fearful of what Esau would have done to him with his 400 men. But you know what? Because the hand of God was upon Jacob. God could turn Esau's heart towards his brother even though he was so angry with his brother for st stealing his birthright as he was so to speak and God made it so much that Esau it says Esau ran to me Jacob how God could do that put Esau in favor with Jacob that even though so he was angry but that anger God take that anger out of Esau and let it be a peace that he ran, he said in verse 4, it says, He ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and wept. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. How God could change Esau's heart. That even though he was so angry with his brother, he ran to meet him, embrace. So, you know, the Bible says, when our ways please the Lord, he will make our enemies at peace with us. And because Jacob's ways please the Lord, God turned his brother Esau's heart towards him, that he ran to meet him. He was overflowed with joy to see his brother, even though he was so angry with him. For stealing his birthright. And he lift, the Bible says, and he lifted up his eyes and saw the women. So he saw the wives of Jacob and all those children and those who are with him. And said, these children which God has given. He said, who are these? That is Esau asking Jacob, who are these? So all Jacob had was his children and his wives. And, he, and Jacob said to Esau, The children the Lord has graciously given thy servant. Oh, I love this story. I love this story. Then the handmaid came. So the handmaid came and they, their children and bowed themselves. So the wives and the children came and bowed themselves before Esau. Because they were so happy as well because they thought that Esau was 
with his 400 men might have caused some some terrible things to happen, but because God put that love in Esau. And Leah also and the children came near, bowed themselves, and afterwards Joseph and, and came near and Rachel and bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest all this dove that, that thou which I met? And he said, These are these are to find faith, grace in thy side. So I think uh, what it says that and es Jacob bought gifts for Esau because he wanted to console with his brother. He wanted to, uh, you know, he wanted to make peace with his brother. So he bought gifts for him. So this is, they call it doves. What is this dove? So they bought gifts. And, he, and Jacob said, if I find, these are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough my brother, keep what thou hast to thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, for now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive, then receive my present at thy hand. Therefore, I have seen thy face as though I have seen the face of God, and thou hast pleased me. Oh, praise God. So, when we put our trust in God, God will put us in favor with whosoever, our enemy, however, those who are against us, when we put our trust in God. So the psalmist says, I start, I come back to the beginning where the psalmist says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Hallelujah. Let me never, hallelujah. Let me never, never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. And we see a story goes, and as we read stories of how people have trusted in the Lord and how God has graciously, graciously delivered them, graciously blessed them because they put their trust in the Lord. And I emphasize that we as children of God, God, God is looking to us. God is expecting us to look to Him. God is expecting us to trust Him. God is expecting us to put all, cast, you know, the Bible says, cast your cares upon Him. Because he cared up for you. God wants us to try him. God wants us to prove him. And from day to day as a child of God, we have to do things. And we have to pray and with an expectation. We have to seek God with an expectation. He wants us to prove him. In, in one word it says, Prove me now herewith, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there may not be room enough to receive it. God can do for us more than we can ever imagine, more than we can ever think. God can do for us. So let us be as the psalmist. Say continually, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Amen. And the God bless you. I will stop there. I would like to hear a word from Sister McLean and from Sister Rose um, before we go. So let's have Sister Rose um, have a few words from Sister Rose, then from Sister McLean. Amen. Amen. It's amazing. It is amazing. Isn't it, Brother Thompson? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I can see that Dillion's on. Dillion, it's like Jamaica over here. <laughs> it's so hot, so, so hot. You know, I just want to give God thanks and praises, you know, but it was a lovely day we went to church today and it was just such a blessing and great things he's done for me. And I'm sure all of you on here, great things he has done for you. And look at the time window we know it's gone. And God has kept me this far. So I just want to give God the praise, the glory and the honour. Um, I would just sing a first um, part of the song. My mum actually said she loves this song. I didn't even know she loved it. Um, it goes, um, I'm sure you all know it, English. 
you sister rose god bless you we all have, we all could sing of the goodness of god um i could say the same all my life he's been so good to me so many things so many roads so many dangerous scenes and unseen so many things and i i can say as you know god has never failed me and i know god has never failed any of us i don't i i i don't think god has failed any of us the mere fact that we are alive and well we can sing, we can sing, we can sing. Oh, glory. We can sing of the goodness of God. Thank you. God bless you, my sister. Continue to give God the praise and continue to give Him the glory. God bless you. God bless you, Sister McLean. I'm turning over to you now. Um, as the Lord uh, lead you, please uh, can I, um, address us. God bless you. Uh, good evening, Brother Sam. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Lord, Lord, bless you. Lord bless you. So happy again to be in the midst of you, my beloved brethren. You know, God is good. And as Sister Rose sing the song about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. If we should speak about the goodness of the Lord, it will take us today, tomorrow, on for a lifetime. Yes. Because truly, God is good. He is good. His praise God. He is good. excellent and He's merciful and He's loving and He's kind and He's gracious. Amen. And He's not a partial God. He serves a God that never fails. And as I sit here and listening to Brother Thompson and as he was quoting the scripture and in Psalms, 
to put our trust in the Lord and to know that His eyes uh, is upon us. Yes. And He loves us and is watching over us. Yes. Praise, praise God. Praise God. You know, when I was speaking about Moses, Moses was the only man, human, that see God face to face. Yes. You know, and the presence of the Lord makes a difference with us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we are in the presence of the Lord, we know that we are secure. We know that no danger can harm. Yes. No evil can harm. Yes. You know, because we are in the presence of the Lord, and in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Of joy. Yes. And we know the Protestants were talking about Moses. Moses was a very humble, very meek, and, you know, he led the children of Israel, children of Israel, they were in bondage for 430 years. Yeah. You know, they were in bondage, and God sent a deliverer. Moses was the one who delivered them out of the hand of the oppressor. Yes. And, you know, I was just sitting down here and listening, and I said, oh, my God. And Moses led them all the way 40 years. They wandered in the wilderness. And because Moses was supposed to take them to Kenya, the promised land, that was the land that was promised to them. Yes. And and those that I think those that have children in the wilderness, they all died, you know, because of disobedience. Yes, yes, so. yes, yes. And Moses led them. And you know what happened? The kids of the children of Israel, the kids of their disobedience, because they were among mixed multitude. Yes. Moses didn't reach the promised land. Even when Moses stood up for them, you know, when God was about to destroy them, Moses stand up for them yes. and speak to God. And God changed his mind, you know, from destroying them, mm -hmm. they repented. That's right. You know, and even though Moses do so much. Moses did not see the promised land. Moses only viewed the promised yes, land. Yes, yes. You know, and I remember when I read in this scripture that Moses said to the children of Israel, it is because of you why God angry with me. Yes. You know, and so God is no respecter of persons, you know, and to see all far more. But nevertheless, Moses was buried. And I have to keep my angels, and you know, but you know what I look into, we be as children of God, we have to be so careful, you know, in our pilgrim journey. Yeah. Don't let nobody steal your joy. No. Don't, let no, don't let nobody stand in your way to prevent you to reach what God has in store for us, because it is so easy. For us to lose sight, you know, yeah, and yeah, of God. Yes. And especially what we are going through in this time here. It is it is so it is so heartbroken. It is so fearful. You know, sickness in the family, death, and so many things are going on around us. Sometimes we wonder so someone else said, Does Jesus care? Oh yes, I know he cares yes. for his heart touched with our grief. Yes. You know? And so far the things of this world that is going on around us, what we get we can see, we can hear, yes. we can feel it. You know, with we'll, if we are not really rooted and grounded and keep our eyes steadfast, no look back in spite of it. The fiery God's fear on its horse and the Red Sea. Let us keep our eyes on the goal. You know, because the things and the trouble and what is going on or will easily, can easily divert our eyes off God. You know, and I will say again, as Sister Rose, God is good. And there is no failure in Him. And you know, I am so glad that I know Him for myself. And he's keeping me alive. Praise God. Amen. He woke me up this morning. And in spite of what is going, sometimes I have a mixed feeling. Because it was just Tuesday gone was my 
grandson birthday and then yesterday Saturday they were at the graveside and my daughter was crying and you know it was so sad in the family you know and three Fridays ago is another grand granddaughter that gets buried and so many things yeah you know are going on and sometimes it makes you feel sad and sometimes they're feeling as if you know God is God is God helping me God does God care oh yeah. yes I know he cares. he cares but you know we live in this world we have a lot of trials you know to go through so we should not let these things these things bother us or prevent us from go forward you know because the word of God is here to guide us and to protect us yes you know because we are in tribulation time and so let us keep our eyes on Jesus Amen. because he's the only one and I know for certain that God answers prayer all we have to do just wait on the Lord and be of good courage the Lord bless you brother Jack. Amen. the Lord and all you have to bless for my daughter Amen. God, amen. amen, amen. God bless you, Sister McLean. God bless you. Um, I know you're trusting the Lord because I know what you've been through in life, and I know you're always hanging on, no matter what, and you you ne uh, you never doubt. And you know, God is God is surely gonna bring you out, no matter what comes against amen. you. Remember, greater is He that is in you. That is him that is in the world. Remember that. Hallelujah. So we can go on our journey in confidence, knowing that the Lord is with us. And all we need to do is to continue to put our trust in him. And as you say, quite often, so many people are dying. And, you know, I think we have three funerals that this this month alone. Three funerals. One tomorrow. We have one tomorrow. One tomorrow, one Thursday, and I had one couple on the first of um. So there's so much going on, but let us put Jamaica, our trust. In Jamaica, the same thing. There'll be a funeral in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. A church sister, a church sister, husband tomorrow, and last week was two, last week was two funeral at two church in the same district. They two bury at the one spot. My God. My so God. there is a lot of six people in one district in the district that died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, I know. I heard about I heard about so many deaths in in Jamaica. The people are dying, like you know. So that's why. Oh, we... Yes, and they are killing people as well. Yes. They are killing them. Yeah, yeah but... and sister told me that um, she don't know what happened to Jamaica. I must pray for Jamaica because it's just the other day um, this young man and his girlfriend went out um uh, for her dinner, and then she didn't. Day after they didn't see her, um, the, the boyfriend called the mom and asked it after he come. Like we said, Mary, come home and said that. She said, no. Um, uh, we, we had a disagreement in the car and she come out and um and said she coming home. What happened? The, the boyfriend killed kill the girl. Oh, no. And he found the body just last week. Oh, my gosh. We and so many things we, 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 out there, so many things make you, nice. make you free to go back to your own country. Yeah, we're on the last days, sis. We are in the last days, and that's why we need to put our confidence and trust in the Lord. We are in the last days, and um, we, the reality of things is that things is not getting better, and it won't be getting better until Jesus comes. It's no use we hoping and they think things are going to get better. It's not going to get better. We are in the last days. Everybody knows yeah. it. So we just have to anchor ourselves in Jesus. God bless you. Oh, sure. God bless oh, every sure. one of you and God bless you. And may the grace of God be with us all and keep us and help us that we keep our mind and heart stayed upon him. Because oh. he, he said he will keep them in perfect peace. Whose Amen. minds, whose minds are stayed upon him. So all we need to do is keep our mind upon Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just gonna close the short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone that joined this teleconference. I pray your hands will be upon everyone, Lord. I pray your presence will be with us through the course of this week. I pray you help us to draw near to you, Lord Jesus. Help us, every one of us, Lord Jesus, that we look to you who is the author and finisher of our faith. Bless us, keep us, guide us, and protect us. 
and our family and our loved ones and have mercy upon those bereaved oh god remember them lord god have mercy have your way we give you thanks we give you praise in jesus name amen, amen. god bless you god bless you god bless you pt my son delion sister rose sister rose sister mclean god bless every one of you god bless you all have a wonderful Yes, God bless you, Delion. God bless you. Good to see you, my son. Good to see you on the teleconference.